Have you ever wondered what caused an astronaut to float in the outer space but not on Earth? Will he experience a drop in mass or weight in the outer space? To answer these questions, we'll have to cover this chapter, mass, weight, followed by density. What is mass? Mass is the measure of the amount of substance in the body, meaning the amount of solid, liquid or gas in the body. It's termed as mass. Mass is measured in SI unit of kilogram, kg. If we have smaller masses, we will use other units like gram. For larger masses, we can use unit like tons. Okay, one ton is 1,000 kg. Okay, but we seldom really use ton in Singapore. One important thing to note, mass is a constant everywhere, meaning whether you're on Earth or you're on planet Moon, mass will be the same everywhere. It will not change. So we call it a constant. To measure mass, we'll use a measuring instrument, okay, the sliding mass balance, you will probably see something like this in the Chinese traditional medicine hall. Okay, but in the science lab, we'll use a more convenient instrument known as the electronic balance. Okay, where the number can be easily read off the scale over here. What about weight? Okay, weight is the force of Earth's gravitational pull on the object. You and I, we have weight. Okay, and our weight is actually measured in Newton. Okay, so please take note, do not confuse this with your layman understanding. Okay, where usually you say measure, height and weight, and you look at the weight in kilogram. In physics, okay, mass is measured in kilogram, weight is measured in Newton. Okay, which is named after Mr. Isaac Newton. Basically, weight will change depending on the gravitational field strength at a particular point. Okay, this means the G value at different planets. Okay, and to measure weight, we'll use this instrument known as spring balance. Okay, the one that usually your Garunguni man would use. We also call it the Newton meter. So how is weight and mass related? Okay, let's look at this simple understanding. W equals to M times G. Okay, so weight is in Newton. Mass is in kg. This G here is what you have learned in chapter 2, acceleration due to gravity. Okay, on Earth, this value is 10. On the Moon, it's much lesser, about 10 divided by 6, which is just about 1.67. Other than calling it acceleration due to gravity, we can also call this small g gravitational field strength. Okay, you can see this on your cover page. Okay, changing the formula W equals to mg by making g the subject, we'll have g equals to W divided by m. So this is your gravitational field strength, defined as gravitational force per unit mass. Okay, gravitational field is just a region in which any mass will experience a force due to gravitational attraction. So to put it simply, okay, we can either call it gravitational field strength or we call it acceleration due to gravity, okay, because they both have the same value 10. So we can express it as 10 newton per kg or 10 meter per second squared if it's on Earth. Try this question. A small submarine of mass 950 kg sinks in water with a uniform speed of 2 meter per second. What is the weight of the submarine? To find the weight, we need to use the formula W equals to mg. So make sure everything is in SI unit, you'll be able to find the weight in Newton. Let's try another question. An astronaut weighs 820 Newton on Earth, where the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square. Determine his mass. Similarly, we use W equals to mg. We make m the subject. So M equals to W divided by G, 82 kg. 
If the G value on the moon is one sixth that on Earth, what would be his weight if he's standing on the moon? So in this case, uh, we use W equals to mg. M will not change, so it remains as 82 kg. The G value now is 10 divided by 6 for moon. So the answer for weight on the moon is 137 Newton. So look at this question. You will know that weight changes at different planets because G value change. However, mass in kilogram remains the same regardless of which planet you are at. Try one more question on your own. Bear in mind, mass will not change. Weight changes. In summary, these are the differences between mass and weight. Mass is the amount of substance in the body, whereas weight is the force acting on the body. Mass has an SI unit kilogram, weight has an SI unit newton. Mass will not change, it's a constant, whereas weight will change depending on G value. To measure mass, we use a sliding beam balance or an electronic balance. To measure weight, we use a spring balance or we call it newton meter. So back to this question, what causes the astronaut to float in outer space but not on Earth? It will be due to the gravitational field strength, small g. So would he experience a decrease in mass or weight? Remember, mass don't change. So therefore, in the outer space, it is weight that change. There's one more term that we have to learn, known as inertia. Okay, in layman terms, okay, this is something like your inertia to do your homework, your unwillingness to do your homework. So when we say an object has an inertia, we are talking about its unwillingness to change its state. Okay, so usually a super tanker like this has a high inertia. It will tend to gain speed or lose the speed very slowly because of its large mass. Okay, so inertia is a measure of the reluctance, which is the unwillingness of the object, to change either its original state of rest or its original state of motion in a straight line. So for instance, if you are standing at rest stationary, okay, you will be unwilling to change your state of rest. What about if the object is in motion? If you have a little girl running towards you as compared to a big elephant running towards you at the same speed, which one will be easier to stop? Definitely, it will be the small girl. Because a small girl has a smaller mass and therefore a smaller inertia. Okay, meaning a smaller unwillingness to change its state of motion. So in conclusion, you have to understand that the greater the mass of an object, the greater will be its inertia. Okay, so inertia depends on mass. The bigger the mass, the bigger the inertia. Some other examples. If you are seated in a bus and this bus suddenly moves, what will happen to your body? Okay, your body will tend to fall backwards when the bus suddenly moves. Okay, that is because of your unwillingness to change your original state of rest. On the other hand, if you are seated in a bus that is moving and it suddenly stops, you are unwilling to change your original state of motion, so your body will be thrown forward. Okay, so this happens because of inertia due to the mass of a body. Try this multiple choice. A train has high inertia. How difficult it is to start it moving or to stop it. Okay, so high inertia here means high mass. So it will be difficult to start it and difficult to stop it. So answer A.